So one problem, if you work at a big company, like Rackspace has 6,000 employees, um, you know, if you need a, a tablet app made, uh, there's limited resources to do that. Uh, you know, we have a, a team that does uh, Android and a team that does I iOS, but they're building the kinds of apps that are high priority, probably the ones that you're using to run your cloud and start up a, a server instances and stuff and manage your cloud infrastructure on a tablet. But what if uh, you know our marketing department has a stupid idea to build a little app? Well, they're not going to get uh, our iOS developers to you know drop everything they're doing to build a little uh, content marketing app or a, a training app or something like that. So we're going to need new kinds of systems to make new kinds of apps on our tablets and on, on our other uh, devices. And that's what uh, Fliplet is doing, and they're, they're here to talk about enterprise app development right now. Who are you? I'm Ian. I'm the CEO of Fliplet. I started out as a software developer ages ago. Um, you know, when I was in high school and whatever, and, and I moved into software development, but I quickly realized there was this problem that, uh, you know, people can't effectively uh, maintain websites, people can't effectively now maintain apps. Um, and that led me to kind of come up with the business idea of Fliplet. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we hope that we're going to be able to make it uh, more efficient for people to build apps as we move forward. Yeah. Now, this is. Uh an app development tool, and there, there's been dozens of these over the years trying to uh, make it possible to build work, work group style applications mm. for enterprises, right? Uh, marketing apps, training apps, that kind of thing. Um, who do you think is going to buy this? Uh, who's it aimed at so that we can get rid of all the other people who don't matter? <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So firstly, I would definitely say like our product's not aimed at techies. Because techies, you know, they can just build their own stuff. Yeah, so you're um, not a Visual Basic or a no. A, we're not a developer tool or a Ruby um, on Rails today. Or no, we're more um, we're we're more a tool that can be used by non-technical people, people who don't understand design necessarily, um, but have a need for an app and they just want to push something out fast. Um, so at the moment, uh, some of our customers include marketing people, sales people, uh, innovation people, uh, and we've been having some really interesting conversations lately with kind of head of mobile strategy people like that who realize there's a gap in what they can deliver. Coming back to your intro, you know, uh, yeah, limited iOS and Android development resource because it, it's tricky to do that stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, we kind of fill that gap. And, and hopefully, if a Fliplet version of an app is successful, that it becomes a priority and then it gets you know, the development team's attention. Yeah. So what, uh, first of all, how do I buy this? Is, is it free or do I pay $100,000? Give me a, a sense of how like a Rackspace would buy this and yeah. start using it. Um, so it's it, like the, our, kind of, uh, our sales process is pretty simple. Like if you said, Ian, I, I'd really love to use this at Rackspace, I'd basically say, all right, Robert, what apps do you think would be valuable here? And what can we kind of mock up together and push out to the organization really rapidly to see if it's going to work? Um, and we'd show you how to collect and utilize the statistics that that would bring back to you. And then from there, you can kind of make a decision, oh, wow, you know, training, as an example, is really working out well. I'm going to double down on that. And this marketing one, uh, you know, I didn't get great feedback on it, and uh, it's not my forte, so I'm just going to pull that one. We give you that type of flexibility. And then once it's clear how the organization's going to kind of get, get value out of the product, um, we then have a, a per-device licensing model. Okay, so we have 6,000 employees. If I'm building a training app, that, like, like a sexual harassment training app, <laughs> which is sort of <laughs> funny, but that's what we have to do at a big yeah. company. Um, how, how, would I, how much would I uh, budget for that? Um, well, I guess uh, what we'd probably look I mean, at... I'm, I'm, a, I'm asking, is it $1,000? Yeah. $100,000, a million dollars. Yeah, right? so it's you definitely know, enterprise. Because I need to know, is this something I could put on a credit card? <laughs> yeah, know? no, no, no. You're definitely not, I mean, uh, unless you've got a really big credit card limit. No, yeah. it's definitely enterprise software. Um, and, and typically... So tens of thousands or... Tens of thousands. Okay. And, um, and, and yeah, that's also due to the fact that you know, if Rackspace was to deploy it to 6,000 people, they probably want to talk about it. But it's cheaper than hiring an iOS developer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, which costs you 100,000 a year. And right? you inherently get scale out of it, right? Yeah. So because 
we're not charging per app. This is a really key differentiator. We're not charging per app. If you take 6,000 licenses, you can use it for as many apps as you like. So if you, if you go, hey, this is great. Now we need an employee handbook one and we need a you know, canteen, what's on it, you know, the menu today type app and all these other things. There's no additional cost. So once you've got the platform, it's a platform play. Okay, so now we know what it's for. Um, give me a sense of the kinds of apps and you have a development tool that you run on a Mac and then you can shove apps to what? Uh, I see an iPad here. Can I use an Android tablet? Can I use a yeah. phone? Tell me uh, what the distribution yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. So um, just briefly, uh, it's a web-based, what we call Fliplet Studio tool, which is a visual way that people can build their apps. Um, so that's what's running on the Mac here. This is actually running in Chrome. Um, and then what happens is I can make changes. I can publish the, the app changes. They become available on smartphones and tablets on iOS and Android. Okay. So you have a runtime like a Fliplet viewer yeah. that I would load on my tablet and I, then apps that I build can go right into the uh, Exactly. Devices. You're spot on and, and you know, uh, it is called Fliplet viewer as you say. Uh, and then I guess you know, the next kind of key question we often get asked is, well that's great, but what happens if I want to put it on the App Store, you can do that as well. So you can build a standalone app. Uh, exactly. You know, Actually, rack spaces, marketing, or rack spaces uh, training app, and put that in the app store. Yeah. And distribute it. And because we're dealing with inherently non, <coughs> I'm sorry. Bless you. Yeah. Um, and because we're dealing with inherently non-technical people, we make that process as easy as possible. So what yeah. you do is say, here's my Google Play details, or here's my iTunes Connect details. Um, I want this app to go into the App Store. Um, and you do it through the online tool, and then we kick off a process. We manage the App Store submission process um, on your behalf. So again, yeah. another in complicated part of the process taken away from the end user. Yeah. Give me a, a sense of maybe three or four, well you sort of said sales and marketing, but give me a sense of some of the apps and maybe show me some and I'll, uh, I'll shoot them. If yeah. You can show me what some of these well, apps look like. I mean, we've got the, we've got the kind of training one um, loaded up here. So uh, let me just jump back um, to kind of the welcome screen. So, you know, so this is a training app? Yeah, this is a training app. Um, this is actually created as a prototype by a customer of ours so that they could demonstrate uh, basically how their training solution could work. So you've got kind of the usual like onboarding process um, and then you can move through, um, you can select a topic in this case. So this was built so that it could support multiple topics. You can answer questions, pretty simple. Oh look, I've, I've just won a silver badge, so a bit of gamification built in. Yeah. Um, and then I can dive into kind of a dynamically generated like infographic, which is kind of your performance. Um, so that's- Now how much of this did the team have to do or how much of this comes just mm. with a platform? I, I mean, this has beautiful icons. I, mm. I, I know I, the guy who designed the uh, iPod uh, yeah. user interface and he spends a lot of time building those icons and, and that's a lot of app development work yeah. that most people don't, don't really understand, right? Yeah, exactly. So you're right. And I mean, what we try to do is componentize different elements of the system. Yeah. So if, if you know, we see a pattern with people trying to do, say, this type of um, training, we build what we call a plugin, we give everybody access to it. So the system, is extensible and, and therefore we try to cover off those issues. Yeah. Um, which is which is obviously a problem to non technical So how much designs. of this did the team mm. like at a rack space have to create compared to what comes in flip fliplet uh, natively? Yeah, so uh, that's a great question. So this one does have a number of bespoke components okay. um, built in and this was definitely designed uh, kind of very much for this customer. Um, but let me show you maybe one that you, you, know, you could do off the shelf. Okay. So this is um, actually an event app that we created. I'm gonna have to spin the iPad around. Okay. Um, this is an event app that we created for a conference. Oops, sorry, I turned the iPad off. Um, so uh, yeah, so uh, you know, typical conference app um, yeah. using all built in, actually our marketing manager built this um, and she would definitely agree with me. She's non-technical and definitely not a designer. Um, so you can see here, you've got you know kind of a fairly standard menu, yeah. Um, and we can drill into, uh, I'd say probably the speakers and agenda, which is the key thing most people are interested in okay. when they go to a conference. And here's just an example, um, you know, some people you know you might be aware of, like yep. the CEO of uh, SoundCloud. So if we drill into Alex's profile, he actually spoke at this event a few years ago, um, and you can see here we've got bio, we've got social media links, um, you know, we've got built-in videos. Uh, uh, you know, of snippets of his 
previous talks at yep. other events so people get a feel. Um, and this was all automatically generated once the content was flown in because you, you obviously <laughs> had to bring in the images the, and things know, like that. Images yeah. and text and stuff like that. But that, that happens over there on the development tool, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I mean, um, you know, I think with design, you can kind of scale it up and down. So some of our clients, um, you know, are, are better at design than others. So our marketing manager in this case is, is you know, wanted to spend a bit of time making them look great and, and squeeze in some custom fonts. But, um, you know, you don't have to. And again, I think, you know, coming back to your app examples, when you've got a need of like, um, you know, sexual harassment training across your organization, the more important thing is to get the information out to the end user. Yeah. Um, you don't necessarily, I mean, <clears throat> to be honest, I'm not sure how, how amazing the design you can make on a sexual harassment training app is. No, that, that's probably one where you just want to maybe have a Rackspace logo on it mm. and have a message from the CEO or something like that, yeah. or the HR person, right, who runs HR. But you, you don't need a lot of customization on that kind of app. Where you would need customization is probably on if you're going to do e-commerce. Do you do, like here, I can buy tickets for this yep. uh, uh, um, conference. But that probably takes me out to another site that does the e-commerce, right? Definitely, and and you know, uh, one of the m uh, most common requirements is, hang on, we have this stuff running on the web. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. That already works. But we want an app that kind of brings content, makes it available offline, means yep. that I can access it wherever I I am, and then just click through to the online content. So that just literally clicks through to the website. Um, and then we don't have to get involved in you know, security yeah. and any of those. Now, things. the problem with showing off a conference app is lots of people are like, well, I never build conference apps. Exactly. I'm, I'm working in HR and yeah. I need a, a training app maybe, and then I need a testing app or yeah. something else. And then uh, the, the accounting people are like, well, I don't care about any of that. I care about building an app that has uh, financials on it so sure. I can hand uh, a, a, an app to the CEO and he gets to see a dashboard of the company, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. It's a great way to make yourself popular inside an organization, <laughs> impressing senior management. And so uh, how flexible is Because the problem with when you compare uh, pre-built tools like this, mm -hmm. Uh, or platforms that do a lot of work for you and don't do coding mm. is they're not they're not all that flexible. But uh, but how where is that edge of flexibility? How flexible is it? Can I come up with an app that you haven't built yet and really do yeah. a decent job? Or yeah. where? Tell me a little bit about where I'm going to fall off the edge. Yeah. So okay. So. Um uh, the, the kind of what we're seeing with customers at the moment is they typically start out building fairly simple apps because um, this is new territory. Like a lot of these guys haven't been empowered to create apps before. What we find is once they get comfortable and they start to kind of want your, uh, you know, their Fliplet apps to do more advanced things, um, that's when they ask for the developer documentation access. We give it to them. We encourage them to go and find developers. All the um, the, the system can be extended using HTML5, CSS3. So it's pretty, okay. you know, not iOS or Objective-C, not Java or Android. This is pretty, pretty easy JavaScript. to find. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so then that system so can be extended with that. So I can, I can actually write code and actually build Fliplet apps with, with code. Yeah, I didn't understand that. So yeah. I thought it was all pre-built. You, you had to take what you have done, and, and that's it. It's, so the, the way, um, so we have two ways that the system can be extended. Themes and plugins, and yes, we borrowed that from every open source content management system out there. Um, themes control the look and feel. You know, they enable uh, branding to be set, things like this. Um, and then plugins have uh, a studio-based management interface, and then uh, kind of an interface for how they render in the app. So a, a simple example, um, but one that we get asked about fairly often for a plugin is we use Salesforce or you know we use another big backend system. We want to pull the data from that into our Fliplet app. Is that a limitation? And we say no. Um, but at the moment, like rather than uh, kind of dive into development when you're not really sure how how your users are going to react to your app, you know, start easy, but know that that feature's there. And then, of course, just to finish off um, your question, you've got the point where it just becomes unfeasible not to build things natively. And of course, that's going to happen. So, for example, if you're Coke and you're running a campaign, you're going to spend, I don't know, 50 million globally on TV adverts, et cetera. Like, no, uh, like a, a cheap Fliplet app is not, <laughs> it's not the right move for you. Go and blow hundreds of thousands with a, an, an app development agency that's going to be doing something revolutionary. Um, and that's why we say this is enterprise apps. 
This is really well suited to internal, you know, empowering people who can't have apps before. This is not uh, an app solution for, for every scenario in the market. Right. And that's why I want to know where you fall off the edge. You know, yeah. what, what is this good for and what is it not good for? Probably if I need to do a lot of interactivity in an e-commerce store that has lots of mm. s custom stuff, probably not good for that, right? Yeah, I, yeah exactly. I mean, uh, so it's, good for, it's good for presenting information, uh, you know, like, like that conference app is a good example. Yeah. It's mostly just presenting information yeah. in a very sta almost static way. It's not, it's not even showing me all the tweets from the conference, right? You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that particular demo isn't, but yeah. Um, but yeah, no, you're you're completely right. It's brochureware, almost. I, I wouldn't go that. It, that, it, that it, close, it does. It supports um, data input, like data capture. Mm -hmm. So you can use it. Uh, you know, some of our customers use it for collecting feedback from people about like what did they th think of the app. Some people use it for collecting leads. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, this would, I think you showed me one that's a restaurant app, right? That you yeah. built for a restaurant, right? Yeah. Do you have that actually? Uh, you yeah, can show sure. That. So, um, Showing off more ideas uh, that's so people actually, see the visual. That's actually an app that's available in the App Store. So yeah. if people uh, were interested in this app, they can go and download it. It's called Steak and Gin. Um, so yeah, this is an app uh, that we built for one of uh, Marriott's high-end restaurants, yeah. um, which uh, they now maintain. Uh, in London. Yeah, um, so you can click on gym. And can, and I, can I show you one of the cool features? Yeah, yeah. Um, which might interest you know, carnivores in the audience. Um, in the steak section, we've got a steak timer. Yeah. Um, and this is actually, uh, this has been um, created based on data from their head chef. So their head chef gave us all this stuff about how people at home can cook better steak. So what you do is you scroll through and select the cut of steak. Um, I'm going to cheat a little bit here and I'm going to pick filet because it yep. cooks really fast, so it's great to demo. Uh, you can set the thickness, I'm going to yep. set it to really thin again, so it cooks really fast. And yep. rare, so it cooks really fast. Um, and then I click ready. Now on the previous screen it said do all of this prep and now off we go. So I click start and, and you know, um, it starts cooking. The cool thing about this is you can be off making salad or cooking chips or whatever it is, watching TV maybe, although yep. you know, never leave your stove unattended. Um, and then when it gets uh, kind of towards the end, uh, a little audible alarm will go off just before you need to do something like turn the steak or rest the steak or whatever. So you can charge back into the kitchen, quickly flip it over and, and hopefully you haven't overcooked your, um, you know, your fantastic steak. There, there's the, uh, co uh, the, there's uh, the alarm. Bar. So that's, that's basically yeah. um, it. Uh, and then you, know, you can obviously uh, reset. And you've also got other things. I mean, this is kind of turning into uh, a bit of a demo of just this app, but you know, we're, this is really content marketing at the end of the day. Yep. Um, so uh, this information already existed out there. It just hasn't been consolidated in a nice package for consumers to enjoy. So, um, so the head chef uh, recorded some videos of him producing their signature dish. We put that in here, which again, any carnivores in the audience will probably find that process quite interesting. You know, it's uh, basically how they, they cook steaks to perfection um, in, in steak restaurants. So, but, yeah. you know, multimedia and things like that can be easily dropped in uh, to your apps. And all of that information is available offline. And the client gets full statistics. We integrated Google Analytics. So the client can literally see which videos have been watched the most, um, which screens, is the state timer getting the use that I need, therefore should I bother updating it? All of these return on investment type questions. So let's talk about what it took to you know, do a layout like this. Um, maybe show us uh, a little bit about what, what the, uh, what do you call the creator? Yeah, Flip Flip <laughs> the Flip Studio. Flip Studio. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's the power there and, and how would somebody use it? Yeah, so um, we find that it typically takes about 15 minutes to teach someone how to use this. I mean, it, it's deliberately not meant to be rocket science. So here I have a, kind of a very simple training app that I just knocked together one Sunday afternoon about web browsers. Um, so, you know, if I want to make changes, I just click and it's all contextual. So, I mean, you know, there's nothing going on here that I'm sure you haven't seen before. You know, we're using open source components to support the editing interface. So it's all very familiar. Um, you know, here I've dropped in a video which I can swap out. Um, and if I just, uh, just jump to one of the other layouts where it's kind of got a mixture of, um, so yeah, again, we can see. And some of this, a lot of this is templated, right? It so is. I, when you were setting up this app, you probably chose from templates to bring in. Yeah. And then you brought in the content. 
Um, exactly. And so now you can edit the content that it, once it's in there. And, and that's kind of the secret to how we kind of um, help end users to create something that looks like, okay, this, this wasn't done by someone who doesn't know how to match colors. This was done by someone who at least has some idea about how to build apps. So by doing it template-based, it means that I can empower very quickly other people um, to go off and create apps, knowing that they're not going to end up with something that the end user gets stuck in and doesn't know how to get out of. Um, yeah, so so you're right, template. How do well. I, it, can I add any interactivity into these easily, or is that where I have to get into the coding side of things? Um, so, uh, so it, once I have a template and I have some content, maybe yeah. I want to put a voting bar on there or, or uh, something that might bring live data in from uh, somewhere else and show it on the page as well. So. Yeah, so the way that works is uh, the, the plugins have to be allocated to your account. Um, and, and so th if you were creating the plugins, um, you would basically upload them straight into your account and then you'd be able to, to kind of start using them. Um, uh, in the case of, of this account, it doesn't have any of those exciting plugins. Um, okay. Some of the ones that I showed you here today. Um, but uh, oh, I don't want to swap that. What I'll do quickly is I'll just add a new screen um, and I'll... Uh, so you just started a new screen there? Yeah, so I just created yeah. a new screen, set the template that I wanted, um, and you know, then I can go through. Uh, I'm just going to quickly pick um, an image, uh, not because um, you know, that selecting images is, is a particularly interesting process, um, but once I've done that, I can then kind of add kind of what happens when people engage with it. Yeah. Um, you probably uh, have a flow, uh, flow screen that shows you know, when you click on the home screen, it takes you to this page, something happens, and then you can go to three separate pages. Is that it's, it's actually, uh, so I'll, I'll just... Because um, the, 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 yeah, when you're on a touch app, you, know, you can click here, and all of a sudden you're on some, some other page. Yeah, so if I just say, like, drop in a button here, um, Just say I want that as a button. Um, it then gives me kind of a series of options. Um, so I can then choose where that button goes, which is what you're talking about, flow. Yeah. So in this case, I could say, well, I mean, a better name for this could be, say, home. Um, and then I can choose uh, where that's going. So I'm going to say that it goes to the content screen, which is the home screen in this case. But uh, you can see there's no code. It's easy. If you can use WordPress or, you know. Exactly. Uh, uh, InDesign or any de design tool, you can use this, right? Spot on, and yeah. that's that's it. I mean, um, uh, just a, a little example of, of kind of how extreme this gets. Uh, I uh, two weeks ago, I caught up with a, a legal firm. You know, they had two things that they wanted. One was like a marketing app yeah. um, about. Uh, I won't get into what it's about. It's definitely not sexy. Um, pensions or something like that. Um, and then they, they had regular internal training sessions, which is great. You'd hope law firms are doing that. Um, but they didn't have anything on mobile devices that supported those training sessions. So I kind of showed them, all right, this is how I do the marketing app. Um, uh, that took about 15 minutes. We did that together. Um, and then I left. Uh, you know, went back to my office on the other side of town. By the time I got back there, I had an email from the client going, hey, this is amazing. I've just built a training app for Thursday's training session. So, you know, the, the speed and um, yeah, empowerment is really what we're hoping, uh, you know, customers will gain from using this tool. No, it's, it's pretty cool. I, I get it. It's a, it's, a, it's a new kind of uh, app development tool. Um, Tell me about the company. How are you funded and how, how many people work there? Yeah, so we're very fortunate. Um, we're bootstrapped at the moment. Uh, we have been talking with a couple of investors recently, but we haven't, we haven't closed anything yet. Um, we're six people, uh, kind of the usual, like a couple of devs, couple of design, uh, marketing and, and myself. Uh, I get to do everything else, uh, which is fun uh, and stressful. <laughs> um, we're based in London. Uh, we were founded in, in 2009, um, and, uh, and yeah, we've been really lucky with kind of the success that Fliplet's had so far. It, it's only been on the market for about nine months. It was launched around about March last year, mm -hmm. and so far we've been able to pick up some pretty, pretty massive customers, much bigger than I really anticipated we'd be able to get, to Very be cool. brutally honest. And where do we get it? Where do we try? Is there a free trial, by the way, or do I have to pay a, a, um, the tens of thousands so of dollars? Just to originally, try? like for most of last yeah. year, it was just a free trial. Go on, start using it. And we found that there was a bit of a, a gap. Like people were 
you know, people's thoughts around what they uh, could do with apps or, or should do with apps wasn't very mature. So what we decided to do is actually turn that feature off. Um, and now we encourage people to just inquire with us. Um, I would stress that this really only makes sense for big organizations um, for a number of reasons. Uh, one, you know, the, the, the workflow and a lot of the features and things like that, you know, it's really only bigger businesses that are quite analytical looking for that return on investment that it makes sense for. Yeah. We've tried using it with smaller businesses and although they get quite excited, typically it, they rapidly get into, I want this innovative feature and that innovative feature. And of course, then they're back into that rut of now, well, now I need unique functionality that not every other organization wants. Now I'm back into the position where I have to build it. I now have bigger development costs. And that's where it's like, to be honest, if your app's really that innovative, you know, maybe it is, is appropriate to go in and you know, find a, uh, an iOS developer or, or, or something. But this is working very well with the bigger guys. Very cool. Thank you very much. And uh, you get it at Fliplit. Fliplit.com. Uh, Fliplit.com. Thank you very much. Thanks, Robert.